what I'm going to talk about now is, is just sort of just dig into some of the basics of how these work. And I think that the, the point of this always is to have a focus on risk. But for LLMs, understanding the risk, we do have to know a little bit about how they work because they uh, they do they are kind of black boxes. But um, so there are some important features that do govern uh, or or modify some of the risk profile. So I'm going to first talk about autoregressive text generation. So ideas like tokenization and talk about transformers again. We'd already talked about transformers in, in the course. Um, going to go over the sort of modern large language model uh, recipe. Um, and then uh, talk about in-context learning, prompt engineering uh, a little bit. Talk about retrieval augmented gener generation, including vector databases, chaining and agents, and then some evaluation of these models. So um, what is autoregressive text generation? So um, as we'll find out in a second, uh, these models really are just predicting the, the base model is really just predicting the next word in a in a in a sequence of words uh, or the next token. And uh, in order to generate the text that we see, it has to sort of iteratively go through uh, this process. So you have an input sequence. Um, starts with an initial set of uh, sequence of tokens. So this is a prompt or some previous part of the generated text. There's gonna be some processing. So the model will process the entire sequence through its layers, and it will calculate a probability of distribution over the vocabulary for each token in the input sequence. So this is actually something that, uh, this is one of the reasons why the, this is these are actually pretty inefficient uh, it's not just predicting the next token. It's actually predicting the next token for all the tokens you put in. Um, but importantly, what it's going to do is look at the last token's distribution. So the probability distribution corresponds to the last token is used to determine the next token in the, in the generated sequence. It's going to have some sort of sampling of that last token. Um, and there are different sam sampling methods like greedy decoding, top case sampling, or top P sampling. And we can talk about those a little bit more if you want. Uh, and then it's going to continue. The sample token is appended to the input sequence and the process repeats uh, from step two for more uh, tokens generated. So well, let me see if I actually have uh, a picture of... Let me go back and, and let's... Um... Let's actually take a look at what I mean by this uh, last, this sort of uh, token probability. So every time you take a, so for every single token, and let's just focus on the last token, you have a, a word uh, and there is a, let's take this axis here to be sort of the entire vocabulary. So meaning these are all the tokens or you can think of tokens and words. As, they're not exactly the same, but you can think of them as being pretty much the same. There's a, like a, a long list, let's say 100,000 uh, potential words that the LLM uh, has knows or understands. And um, what it's going to do is it will take in your input sequence and then, and then what it's going to produce at the end of this network is really a histogram essentially for each word. So think of each little tick mark here as being a particular token or word that could be, it could spit out at the end. It will produce essentially a histogram. It's not really a histogram. It's just, there's a value for each word. There's a probability for each of these words. It might look something like this where uh, there are different, some are higher probabilities than other probabilities. And so this is produced for every single token in the sequence. So, you know, I love, and then let's say that's all I put in. And then there's something here. It could be that uh, this distribution might have for the highest one might be cat, cats. I love cats. Maybe the next highest one, uh, I love chocolate, for instance. And so uh, this is produced for every single token that you put in. So in fact, uh, for the token I, there's going to be a distribution that looks ju just like this. It won't be the same distribution trying to predict what the next word is. But we often, we, we don't use that typically for large, for the, for these chat uh, models. We'll just use the last one and say, what's the distribution probability distribution for the next token 
that's after this last one that I put in. And then there's a sampling that happens. And that sampling is a way of figuring out how do I select what the next one is. And this is where this the stochastic element or this random element comes in. Uh, you can just pick the highest one. So this is like de de greedy decoding. I just want to say, I want the highest probability. I'm going to put cats here. But of course, that doesn't, that doesn't that's not perfect. Uh, and that doesn't give you much variability. And so oftentimes there are like top K sampling. So I might take the where K is some number. So maybe I use five as the number. And so I, I take the top five. So it's cats, chocolate, uh, I love rugs or something like that. I take the top five and then I'm going to sample from those top five. And the sampling that I do will be still be based on the probability like cats is still more likely than rugs but i there's a chance that i pick rugs as the next word or the next token and so this sampling and top p sampling is uh is slightly different than top k sampling it will be i want to get i want to collect uh the probabilities up to 90 percent. so let's say if cats chocolate and rugs if i add those probabilities up it will be 90 percent of the total probability then i'm going to i'm going to set that this let's say to 90 percent. and the reason that's different than top k is because depending on the the distribution i might have three three of them that make up the top 90 percent, or i might have 10 if it's a more flat distribution and so this is actually the one that uh, I think most people prefer at the moment. Uh, most models prefer this top P sampling. And then, of course, uh, once you've chosen one, let's say it happens to be rugs. What I'll do is I'll take now this new sequence, which has another word on it, and I'm going to put it through my large language model again. And so that's the, th that's the basic idea of autoregressive text generation.